How's it going guys, Vapov here and welcome back to another video. Now this one's gonna be a bit different from the ones I usually make. Uh, this one's gonna be talking more from a development point of view and it's very important because more and more manufacturers are going towards this whole VR slash AR concept. We've had uh, leaks about the Apple Glass doing AR things and it looks like Google wants to get into this as well. Now from a development side, I have absolutely no experience but I wanted to share this piece of news because I found it cool and because it could genuinely be something we could see in the future in a more prevalent way. So if we go over to the developer blog from Google, they're basically rolling out this new AR Core Depth API feature that allows more realism when it comes to AR and VR experiences. So AR basically stands for augmented reality and in the past what we've seen is AR tended to be more of this fake experience. People never really got into it because it kind of looked fake and people when they talk about augmented reality want something that has realism. So with this Google wants to do exactly that. So this isn't new, they're basically trying to get depth involved with AR experiences when it comes to smartphones and pardon that notification tone, I'm just going to ignore it. But yes, so the AR experience, how does it work? Well, it's catered towards pretty much every single camera. So whether you have a single, a double, triple, quad, penta, whatever camera setup you have, this thing will work through it. And it's basically done through an API and it's not something that's particularly new. It was actually out to a select few developers sometime in 2019. I think it was in December of 2019, but now it's rolling out to pretty much any developer. And let's see how this can be implemented in some real world examples. So for example, here you get this depth map that it automatically generates for the AR objects to really take advantage of what you're looking at. So this one in particular on the right, you can see that the AR object goes behind the wall, for example. So this could come in handy for things like games where you know you have to take cover and mainly when you combine AR with VR experiences, this could take it to a whole new level. Now, another thing is Five Nights at Freddy. This is a special AR experience where the jump scare could come from pretty much any surface. One of the things that really interested me is this one. So this actually takes into consideration the physics behind these objects as well. So you can see them bouncing off the actual stairs as well as the ledge on the side. And to me, that is really cool given the fact that this isn't even a real thing. It's basically something in space that's taking advantage of what you see in real life and sort of combining the two in real time and giving you this experience. Now, aside from all of these examples, there are a few that are out in the real world as well. These two filters from Snapchat actually use this AR API and when I tried it out, it didn't seem to work as it's shown here. So I'm guessing this has to do with time to get used to it and maybe Snapchat hasn't even pushed out this update yet, but I did try it with the OnePlus 8 Pro. So there was no limitation in terms of camera. And this is a pretty new phone at the end of the day. And I didn't want anyone to, you know, consider the fact that maybe I'm using an older phone, etc., etc. So I tried it to the best of my abilities and you'll probably be able to see that on screen, but it didn't work as intended. So I don't know whether or not Snapchat has pushed this update out, but there was an update today. I did update to it, so I don't know what's going on here. I'm pretty sure there are bugs to this feature and this is the most ideal case scenario. So yes, even though you do see cool things like this, you have to make sure you give it time. So maybe in the next few weeks or even the next few months when this thing starts rolling out to more and more developers, we're gonna be starting to see it in more and more Snapchat filters especially. Plus Snapchat, I don't know how many people actually use Snapchat, probably like eight or nine people in the world. So um, um, I, I'm guessing when it starts becoming more popular in different sort of applications, we're gonna start seeing more of it. But I found it to be really cool and this is sort of the next direction that AR could take. I know AR and the development of it is starting to get a bit muted, but with technology giants backing it, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. Another one that I found really interesting was this one from the TeamViewer pilot application where you could literally interact with the things on screen and people can see it in real time if you're doing things like a video call and you wanna ask them to fix a certain appliance. And this is better shown in Google's video right here. I skipped a bit of it, but you can see more of the features. So I tried this once again. This is another way of demonstrating the same um, bouncing feature. So again, it's very interesting to see what Google is doing. And this is the one that I was showing you about. So this is real-time collaboration 
using augmented reality. So where the client gets a real time view of what to do in order to fix something. But anyways, the point of this video is that the possibilities of this sort of concept are endless. You could have them in fixing scenarios. You could have them for learning, entertainment, traveling, because that's going to be a big thing considering this whole global pandemic going on right now. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. And if people are or if Google and Apple and, you know, many other companies who might be working on this, make this accessible to you know all of their smartphones, this could be a big deal for the next few years to come. It doesn't require any sort of TUF depth sensors. So that's a big plus point. You could pretty much have this running on any single camera smartphone as long as you have the hardware power to support it. And of course, the AR experience could be better optimized if you have a TOF sensor or if you have a depth sensor dedicated for these kind of things. But definitely, even without it, you can have this thing running. Now, the only drawback from all of my testing that I've done so far is that I don't have a Google Pixel device to test these features out in depth. Maybe Google Pixel devices are way more optimized for all of these things to work on you know, the smartphone, and that's why Snapchat maybe didn't work as intended. But yeah, I think I found it really cool. Imagine having a VR headset to access your AR computer somewhere in space. So you know how you can rent uh, laptops or how you can rent computer power using um, Amazon Web Services. Imagine doing that in VR, in AR. I think that's what the future is gearing towards and maybe in the next few years we'll see that happen in real life. But I think that sums up this video and my thoughts on this whole situation. I'll give it a few more weeks, maybe make an update video or maybe my experience with AR if you'd like to see that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. This was Vabov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.